We've all heard that message. In fact, it's one that I actually say often that we can do hard things. But here's the reality of what comes along with that. Whatever it is that you're facing, it's something difficult. It's going to demand that you really lean into something greater than yourself to get over and to persevere. But I want you to know, despite it being hard, despite it being difficult, despite it even being something that is really designed to overwhelm you and possibly take you out, you can still do hard things. You may have to go deep in yourself and find your inner strength. You may have to go deeper and find the power that God has given you, but you can still do hard things. And I think when you hear the story today, you'll understand that no matter what is in front of you, no matter how great the obstacle, you can persevere if you'll rely on the power that God has given you. Now let's get into it. For the longest time, I secretly wanted more. I often found myself shrinking to fit in, settling for what was comfortable, and even selling myself short. Once I finally accepted that we deserve success and we are blessed with the power to achieve it, I stopped playing small. I'm serious about building a life I love, and you should be too. I'm Denise Taylor of DeniseTaylor.live, and welcome to Embrace Your Power. I help women prioritize themselves, their success, and their happiness. Now let's meet this week's achiever whose story will inspire you to embrace your power and go. Well, hello there. It's Denise Taylor here. You know, I'm always excited to have you join me each and every week right here on Embrace Your Power. Now, this is the place where you can count on me to always encourage you to build a life that you love. And more than that, I believe that God has given you power to do it. You see, in his word, he said he did not give us fear. He gave us power. And when we embrace our power, we truly can be, do, have, and achieve anything that we want. Now, I will tell you, I believe that you'll be divinely inspired to go after the things that God is looking to partner with you to achieve. But here's the thing. When you do, when you join him in partnership, you are going to experience so much satisfaction and fulfillment that will light you up from the inside out. And I have to tell you that feels amazing. So I want you to embrace your power. I want you to go for the things that you desire. I want you to prioritize yourself. Now, I don't know if you're watching me on YouTube or maybe you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, but what I do know is I am so excited to be connected with you. In fact, I call Thursday Treat Day because I know that's the day that I am going to show up in your lineup and we are going to be connected right here. Now, if that didn't happen for you, that just means that you need to subscribe. So wherever you listen, hit the subscribe button and I will be here next week with something else to encourage you in your journey. Now, I will tell you, we talk a lot about the success superpowers around here. I believe that the success superpower sets you up for winning success. They are strategies that you can apply to whatever situation you are facing. Now, if you don't know about them, then you need to go to my website, www.successsuperpowers.live and get plugged in. There's a short video there for you. There is an ebook that you can download and it's absolutely free. So I invite you to go there today so that we can get on the same page when we talk about success. Now, I don't know if you've ever really listened, but at the opening of this podcast, I say these words, for the longest time, I secretly wanted more. That's my true confession. I wanted more for so long and I kept it a secret. And what I want to do now is I want to help women who are just like me holding on to what they secretly want set themselves free. 
I want you to be able to experience satisfaction and fulfillment that feels good to you. I want you to be able to lean into your next level of success. I want you to have what you secretly want. And so I have a brand new private mentoring program, and I'd love to tell you more about it. If you visit my website, Women wantmore.live. I have a short video there where I explain more about how you can lean into and begin to experience the more that you desire. And I also have a link there to set up a call between me and you. I want to talk with you live. I want to hear about your aspirations. I want to hear about your dreams. I want to hear about what you secretly want. And I want to help you really figure out how to navigate and break through everything standing in the way. I am so excited about this private mentoring program where I get to partner one-on-one with women who are ready to take their success to the next level. And so if you think that that might be of interest to you, why don't you set up a time for us to chat? That would be great and I would look forward to it. Now I will tell you, I've only set a few times aside this month for these types of calls. And so if you're interested, you'll want to go to the website right away so that you can secure your spot. Again, the website is womenwantmore.live. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about this week's achiever. In fact, I'm so excited that she said yes to my invitation to come and tell her empowering story to all of us. Anita Morris is a phenomenal woman of God. And here's more about her. Every person has a story to tell about life. Anita is a sewing instructor who has inspired us to learn to create our own clothing. She is also the author of the book that has inspired and encouraged us to step into purpose in the midst and aftermath of life's trials. She's a transformational speaker who captivates audiences with engaging stories and practical life application. Anita is the founder and owner of Anita by Design, and most of all, Anita is here by God's design. Her experiences in life, the good and the bad, the joyful and the painful, the mundane and shocking, were all ordained for his purpose. She creates a safe space for us to be inspired, encouraged, and uplifted. Anita brings a bright light to her community and serves from the heart. When we get into this conversation today, you're going to hear about persevering. You're going to hear about overcoming. You're going to hear about a love that blossomed beyond pain. I'm so excited for you to get to know Anita, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the other side. So I have to tell you, this is a conversation that I wanted to bring to Embrace Your Power at the right time. And when I kicked off my 2023 year, I knew that I wanted to have Anita join me. I have had the chance of watching you blossom, hearing your story, seeing your success and how you're just being so impactful and transformational in so many lives in some unique and different ways through sewing and through your message. And so I'm just so excited that everything aligned for this moment to happen and for you to join me here. Um, your testimony is so powerful and I know that Uh, listeners are going to hear it. They're going to not only be inspired, but they're going to be encouraged in their journey um, as they're navigating difficulty and the ability to overcome. I think they're going to find some great nuggets today. And I'm so excited that you said yes to my invitation and that you're here. So Anita, I just want to welcome you to Embrace Your Power. Um, They've heard a little bit about you before we came on, and I just want to give you a chance to introduce yourself in your own way. Yes, of course. Denise, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to come here and chat with you to share with your audience. I have listened to some of your episodes, and I absolutely love what you're doing, how you are highlighting 
um, people with incredible stories for the purpose of encouraging and inspiring your listeners. So thank you. I love the title, Embrace Your Power. I love it because I feel like that is exactly what God is allowing me to do right now in my life. So I am Anita Morris. I am first and foremost, a woman of God. I love Jesus. He is my life. He is my source of life and my foundation. So that is who I am first. I am a mother of two adult sons. I call them my, they're my heartbeats. You know, we love our children. So I have two sons and I am a sister, Denise, to women of the world. I love sisterhood. I love being in community with other women where I can engage in conversations, where I can grow and learn together with other women, where we can support and uplift one another as we're walking this journey called life. So that is who I am in my soul. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think of you, when I see how you show up, when I see your smile, when I just see what radiates from you, I will tell you it is joy. And I know your journey to getting to that authentic joy that you get to feel and experience now was not easy. But before we start unpacking that, tell us about life now. Describe the joy that we see. Oh my gosh. The joy that you see, it's definitely a joy that has been deposited into me because of my faith. My faith in Jesus and the joy that is inside of me it exudes. And I hear it all the time. People, you know, say, I see something in you and I know it is Jesus. Not everybody recognizes that, but I know it is the Holy Spirit that resides in me. And the joy that I have inside of me is something that is, nothing can shake it. Like nothing can take away my joy. You know, I talk about happiness being circumstantial, but the joy, there is nothing that can take that away. So right now where I am along this journey is I, I am, I have this this um, brand called Anita by Design. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. And I teach women all over the world how to master the basics of garment sewing. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love to sew, Denise. I have this saying, give me Jesus and a sewing machine. <laughs> and that has been part of my journey, trusting Jesus and sewing. So I love to sew and teach women how to sew their own garments. I am an author. My book is called Step Into It, Overcoming Trials That Lead to Purpose. And from the book, I have stepped into the speaking arena. And I share a message of hope, perseverance, and triumph for those who are living in the midst and aftermath of devastating life trials. So my joy that I'm living right now is a combination of stepping into what God has called me to do in this season of life and trusting and believing that he is walking me through it. Mm -hmm. And I want to start there because I think as we start unpacking the story, I want people to know the end, that the end is a joyful end for you because when you're going through your trials and you're going through dark days and you're experiencing the blows of bad choices and decisions and all of those different things. When you're experiencing that, you hit a low, right? And as we walk through your story, I want them to know that the end is joy for you and that you you light up and that you feel the love of Christ, that you feel that you are called, that you still have purpose, that you still have more to accomplish. But it wasn't always that way, right? And you had to be very courageous. You even made some choices and decisions that some people might have side-eyed. Like, what is this girl doing? Why is she staying with that? Like all of the things. Um, but you followed your convic convictions. You followed your heart. Uh, you led with love. But it took you to some dark places. And so did you ever wonder that you would make it through when you were going through and did you ever feel like it was too much to bear? I absolutely had a time when I did not know how I was going to make it through. Mm -hmm. I knew that I would because I had seen other people make it through and thrive again in life. Mm -hmm. But when I was in the thick of it, Denise, my pain was so deep that I just could not imagine me being okay again and thriving in life again like I am now. I couldn't see that back then. I didn't know how that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, here I am. 
Yeah. And, and, and so I want that to just be the overarching thing. I want people to know there's joy on the other end of our journeys. If we will just continue to step into it, like you have admonished us to do. And I want to congratulate you on your book and the best selling, uh, you know, credentials that you now have with it. And that's an amazing accomplishment. Um, you describe the book as walking the reader through the process of becoming transformed in the midst and aftermath of storms. That's a big deal. That is a really, really big deal. That means it's revealing and it's transparent and that it has signs of pain that you had to heal and overcome. How did becoming an author help you in your healing journey and in that process? Oh my gosh, it played a huge role. And I will say that it was probably the greatest role of all. So when I was going through my healing and, you know, the grief process, I was just allowing myself to deal with it. You know, I was allowing myself to go through all of the different emotions that come up when you're grieving. And when I heard the call to write a book, I wasn't sure. I was sharing on Facebook you know, my journey and the things I was going through and people would comment and they would say, have you considered writing a book? You should write a book. So I would hear these, these comments and I kind of brushed it to the side until I heard loud and clear from the Holy Spirit, you are going to write a book. And so I surrendered and said, okay, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And at first I was like, my life is not a story. I, you know, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but when I started writing, I had to go back to some painful, dark places, Denise. Mm -hmm. And not only was I healing from the major thing that we're going to, you know, the things that we're going to talk about today, but I went way back to childhood mm -hmm. to deal with some things that I thought I was okay with, mm -hmm. but there's something about writing it and going back and in a way reliving it mm -hmm. that just released all of this. I'm going to say all of the weights that I had been carrying on myself. You know, I had been walking through life thinking I was okay, not realizing that I was carrying the weights of some of the things I've experienced in my life. Mm -hmm. So going through the process of writing that down and really processing what I had been through helped me not only to give it voice, but to acknowledge, okay, you went through this thing. Let's deal with it now. Mm -hmm. So it was a very powerful experience. I always tell people that it felt like it, it was very therapeutic. So I felt like I was going through a therapy session because I had a, I had a, a book coach to walk me through that. So yeah, it, it was something. And it, it, it was like the beginning of my, I'm going to call it my rise up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I feel, I feel like when we allow ourselves to experience and really deal with what we've been through, it's so liberating. And I know that that sounds counter in, you know, intuitive to people to think that if I deal with it or I release it or I work to heal from it, that I will feel free. But what I've discovered with my own trauma, with the things that I've been through is oftentimes we're holding on to it. It is not necessarily holding on to us. And when we are free enough to just open our hands that pain that we've been carrying, that weight that we've been carrying and all of the guilt, shame, condemnation, embarrassment and everything else that came along with it, it just kind of goes away and you find yourself free. It, it is so true. When I pressed the send button to, to submit my, my manuscript to the editor, Denise, I literally exhaled. I remember sitting in the chair and there was a deep, exhale like a a sigh and it literally felt like all of the weight had fallen away from me and what I realized well before I realized this I went through the house screaming I was home by myself and I literally went screaming because my thought was oh my gosh somebody is about to read my story somebody's gonna know the truth exhale it was just a piece it's, it's kind of like that peace that surpasses all understanding that we hear about spoken in the scriptures. And at that moment, when I released it and exhaled, the thought that came to me was, I never have to worry about anybody judging me because every once in a while, I would think about what if somebody finds out, what if somebody finds out about my secrets and they start telling people, 
Mm-hmm. And after I released it, I was like, I never have to, I never have to worry about that again because I told my own story. I told it first and I told it on my own terms. So nobody will ever be able to take my story, weaponize it and use it against me. And that is liberating. It it really is. It really, really is. So we've danced around it enough, right? So let's go ahead. Um, I know that there is so much in it. Um, and I want you to feel comfortable sharing what you are comfortable sharing about it. Um, tell us about what you experienced. Okay. So I've shared with you guys that I have the Anita by Design brand where I teach women how to sew. And that was born from a very dark, devastating time in my life. So I found myself down on my knees in my bedroom closet one day crying after I discovered that my husband was having an affair. We had been married for 19 years, almost 20. And Denise, I was devastated. The heartbreak of, you know, finding out something like that. So I was in that closet crying. My heart was broken and I didn't understand because we had been married for for so long and he treated me very well. Like he treated me like a queen, Denise. So I was confused. And when you're going through something like that, questions started or, you know, start rushing in. So all of these questions came at me and I wanted to know who the woman was. I wanted to know where they met. I wanted to know how long they had been seeing each other. I also wanted to know if my husband was in love with another woman. Mm -hmm. But Denise, I also wanted to know where they were. Because when I found out, my husband was actually with the woman. Mm-hmm. Now, I told you that I love Jesus. You know, I am a woman of faith. I'm a woman of God. And I do seek to please and honor him with my life. However, in that moment, I I wanted to show up and do some damage mm-hmm. because my heart was broken and I wanted him to hurt. I wanted her to hurt, but I didn't know where they were. So I stayed in the closet. And then I heard my husband's footsteps. So after I found out about the betrayal, he rushed home. And if you've ever watched a movie where there is suspense and you get to the climatic part where you know something is about to happen and you can just feel it coming, that's what it was like as he approached the closet. The closer he got to that closet, the louder, harder, and faster those footsteps became. And it was like, the footsteps were piercing my soul because I could feel it. And I wasn't ready, Denise. I was not ready to see him. I wasn't ready for the confrontation. I didn't know what to do. Like I wanted to lash out. And I remember I, I was thinking like, throw something at him, yell at him when he gets here. But my, my, my heart said, no, that was my flesh saying, do something. And my heart said, no. And then there he was standing in front of the closet door and Denise, our eyes met. And it seemed like it was forever that we stood there looking at each other. And that moment began a long, hard, painful fight to save my marriage. Denise, I decided to stay, but it wasn't easy. It took a while for me to get to that point. And I'm sure that some of your listeners right now are thinking, why in the world would, why would you stay with a man who cheated on you? And I understand that because I used to think the same way. I remember a time when I used to think that women who stayed with their husbands after they cheated were stupid. And every time I say it, I hate to admit that, but that was my, that's how I felt. And I always told myself, I will never stay with a husband if he cheats on me. Like, why would you do that until it happened to me? Mm -hmm. So We, I cried out to God because I didn't, I didn't, I had never experienced this with, you know, this was my only husband. I had never experienced this and I didn't know how to go through it. I just knew the pain that I was feeling. Mm -hmm. So I knew that in order to get through this and to stay in this marriage, I was going to need some help. So I cried out to God and asked him to help me to get through this, to help soften my heart because my heart was very hard against my husband. I wasn't very nice to him and he had to live in a house with a woman who, was disgusted with him. So I asked God to help me through it. But while I was praying, I also started sewing. I dove heavily into sewing because I needed something tangible to focus on at that time. And when I sew, it just takes me to another place. 
and I get to create all of these beautiful garments and I want it to feel beautiful. When you go through marital betrayal, the question does come up, you know, is there something I could have done, you know, and to, to, to change it, to prevent it from happening. And obviously it had nothing to do with me. So I would go into sewing and I would go in that room every day and sew and sew and sew. And I started posting the garments that I was making in these Facebook sewing groups. And the women started commenting and they would say things like, you should start a blog. You should start a YouTube channel. So eventually my husband and I together, because we, you know, we recovered, we went through the process. We did the heart work. And like I said, it was not easy and we recovered. So after I started posting in the Facebook group, eventually we launched Anita by Design. Mm -hmm. And I like to tell people that what the enemy meant for evil, God flipped it mm -hmm. and he turned it for my good. The moment that I was crying down, you know, on my knees in that closet, mm -hmm. that was a dark time. And that closet represented darkness, despair, pain. But after launching my brand and having hundreds of women, thousands of women all over the world now learning how to sew, mm -hmm. God took that thing. And now that closet represents light, hope, and triumph. Mm -hmm. So not only am I putting gifts back into the closet that birth the gift, Denise, mm -hmm. but women all over the world are putting gifts into the closet too, as I teach them how to sew their own garments. That's so amazing. So it, it, so it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So we continued living our lives. We were, you know, learning how to navigate this process because it didn't, you know, it doesn't just end once you decide, oh, we're going to stay together. You have to continue to work through that process and triggers will come up and you have to deal with those things. So we continued working on our marriage and we were just living our best lives. And we stepped into a new season when my husband retired from his job. He served 30 years and he retired and we were excited about the things we were going to do, you know, the places we were going to go. We had already started traveling and we were just enjoying each other. We had fallen in love with each other all over again, deeper than we had ever experienced in our 19 years together. But six months after my husband retired, he was diagnosed with brain cancer and that Denise was a very hard blow. Mm -hmm. Eight months after he was diagnosed, I stood by and watched my husband take his last breath. Mm -hmm. And that is when I didn't know how I was going to be okay again. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine living life without my husband. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started to hear the words. Mm -hmm. They were the same words that I heard when I was healing from the betrayal. Mm -hmm. And they were the words that I heard when I was caring for my husband during his illness, because I was his caregiver here in our home. And the words were stand, trust, endure, and proceed. Mm -hmm. So when I heard stand, I thought it meant that I needed to be strong. And I thought, well, I'm a woman of God. I've got this. I know how to be strong. I've done that all my life, but that wasn't it. It meant that I needed to stand in my faith, remembering everything that God had already planted into my heart to help usher me through my grief process into healing. Then I heard trust and I thought, oh, I know how to trust God. I've been trusting him all along, but it was different this time. It meant that I needed to remember that God is sovereign and he does not allow anything to come into my life without his permission. And if he gives it permission, then it has purpose because he's an intentional God. Mm -hmm. Then I heard endure with grace. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what that looked like. Well, what it meant was that I needed to allow myself to go through the grief process, mm -hmm. not trying to run away, not trying to hide, not trying to get away from the pain, but I needed to allow God to walk me through that process so that I could gain the healing that I needed. And then finally, I heard proceed. And what that meant was that I needed to continue along the path that God had ordained specifically for me using all of the lessons, Denise, that I had learned from the previous trials 
to help usher me into this purpose in which I stand right now. It's, it's just powerful. And like I said, I've heard the story. I've heard you share it a number of times. And I just see so much compassion, so much empathy, so much love, so much growth, <laughs> so much patience. Um, I see so much in it with everything that you went through. And as I heard you sharing it today, I think it was how you likened the grief from losing him, almost similar to the grief of what happened in the relationship and how that process was similar to get through both. And so I think many times we feel like there's a different answer for each of our experience of impact that we have. And what I hear you saying and what I believe is true is that sometimes we can find a process that can help us navigate certain situations, certain kind of situations, though the circumstances may be different. And so I love how God illuminated that to you and said, Anita, you've been here before. You can get through this. Let me remind you of what you had to do before so that you can walk yourself through this. So let's unpack a little bit more because step is a powerful process. And I love how you said this is something you can apply to all of those harsh traumatic experiences and you proved it for yourself. And so stand that foundation of truth that you're built on, where did that come from? Like, where did your ability to grow and love God and rely on him? How was that nurtured in your life? Where did that like come from? Yes, that started when I learned how to have a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So from a child up through my teenage and young adult, early young adult days, I knew how to go to church. I knew how to, you know, play the part at church and then go home and live a different life. So I, I've done all of that. Mm -hmm. But when I had my first child, that's when I got serious and said, okay, I'm raising another life. I'm responsible for another life. So I need more. I need to know God, not just to know of him, but I need to know and experience him. So I learned, I went into a new church because we moved to a new town after I got married and I learned how and what it meant to have a relationship with God. And that was the beginning of my change. I started applying myself to reading the word. I learned how to study the word and how to live what I was learning. Mm -hmm. So once I learned how to have that personal relationship with God, everything started to change. Denise, I, I like to share about how I learned the books of the Bible because I didn't know the books of the Bible, you know, before I learned how to have a relationship with God, but I became a Sunday school teacher at my church. And as I was teaching the children, I one day decided I want to teach them the books of the Bible, but I didn't know the books of the Bible. I wanted to teach them in order. So I said, okay, I'm going to learn with the kids. <laughs> and that was such a powerful time in my life. Of course, of course, it was powerful for the kids, but it was powerful for me too, because I took something that I didn't know and didn't allow it to caused me to turn around and say, no, I'm not going to teach them that because I don't know it, but I learned it with the kids. Mm -hmm. And when I learned the books of the Bible and learned how to find the books, I was able to go deeper into the word and learning. That was so incredible. So what I started doing for myself throughout the years is I would get involved or join Bible studies with other women, because remember, I love community. So I would apply myself to studying with other women. I started getting active and serving at the church, something I had never done before. And all of these things together helped me to start building my faith. I would have my own private time with God at home, something I had never done before, you know, just getting in the word with him by myself, praying, allowing myself to be quiet in prayer. A lot of times people do a lot of talking in prayer and don't give them 
ourselves time to sit still and listen. And it's hard in the beginning to just be quiet. It's uncomfortable. But when you learn how to do that, it is so powerful. I have found times when I've allowed myself to sit still and quiet during prayer to just stop talking and listen. I have heard God answer prayers. I have, there have been moments when I've been praying about something and literally prayed the answer out of my own mouth because of the working of the Holy Spirit. So I have applied myself to just being present with God, Bible study, pray, all of that. And that is what I have done to build my foundation. So yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing. You know, what's really interesting is I literally just had this conversation yesterday, um, with someone who was wading through, um, you know, the reports and the testing and all of that, that happens when you're going through the medical question. Like, we're not sure yet. We got to do more testing. And in that period of time, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of overwhelm. There's a lot of uncertainty. And the one thing I said to her, I was like, I don't know how people make it through without a relationship with God. I I just, when you're in those moments, when you're in those difficult seasons, when you're facing adversity and uncertainty and you don't have faith to go to, like, I don't know what you're reaching for and whatever it is, it's temporal and it's not going to be able to sustain you. And I love how you walked us through your own journey. One that you started as an adult, as a mom saying, you know what? I need to go back to some elementary things and learn them. I need to apply myself to this. I need to devote time to it. I need to be as invested in this relationship as I am in any other and showed up for yourself, for your family in that. And I can only imagine what you would have faced if you were in that closet and you didn't have that. The flesh wouldn't have had to talk very loud for you to pick up a shoe and whack him up aside the head for you to find out where they were and drive where they were and try to do damage like you had fleeting thoughts to do. And so I just marvel at the fact that those of us who have a relationship, a faith-based relationship with God, have that asset where we can tap into him. But I am always wondering for those who don't have it, how desperate they must really feel. Denise, I can't, like you, I cannot imagine having to go through something like that without God, because what happened is he gave me that peace in the yuckiest circumstances. He gave me that peace that we hear about, the peace that surpasses all understanding. And God prepared me. Some people may not understand that. God prepared me for what I was going to go through. So there was a time when I was so active in my church and in ministry, doing all of the things, very busy, always gone, you know, doing all of that thing. And one day, Denise, I heard in my spirit, step down, go home. And I didn't know what that meant. And I had to, you know, really process process it for a while. Well, it came to me that I was so busy outside of my home doing ministry that I was neglecting my first ministry, which is my family. And so I obeyed. I st- I was in women's ministry. I was teaching Sunday school. I was doing so many things. And so I stepped down from everything and I went home and focused on my family. And something so amazing happened. I had my own private Bible study. Like I even stopped going to the Bible studies at the church. I had my own private Bible study and I went through the book of Romans. That was my study. Denise, when I tell you that was the most, to this day, that was the most powerful Bible study I have ever had in my life because it was guided by the Holy Spirit only. I didn't have another person in there, you know, guiding me through it. It was me and Jesus. And what I learned later from that, or actually when I was doing it, one day it was so heavy, you know, the downloads and everything that I was learning was so heavy that I stopped. I'll never, never forget this. I was sitting in the office at the desk and I stopped and I said, God, I don't know what you're preparing me for, but thank you. 
Thank you, God, for whatever you're preparing me for, because I felt in my spirit because that study was so heavy that he was preparing me for something. And I felt like it was going to be something hard. Then after my husband passed away, or actually when he was sick, when he was ill. And I remember one day that I was, I felt just defeated. Like I didn't have anything else to give. So I went into the other room because I didn't want my husband to see me crying. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting down on my knees and I told God, I said, God, I'm so sorry. I know I haven't been spending time with you and I haven't given you anything. And I said, God, I don't have anything else to give. Mm -hmm. And like an explosion happened in my heart. And I heard the spirit say, my daughter, you've been living my word. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh. He said, you don't have anything to give, but I have everything to give. Keep living my word. Mm -hmm. Denise, that's when I flashed back to what happened in that office that day. I was like, God was preparing me. He knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. So when my husband passed away and I had to go through the grief process, I understood that God had prepared me to go through that. So you hear people, a lot of people say, it didn't happen to you. It happened for you. Mm-hmm. I under, I agree with that for a lot of things with my, the marital betrayal that happened for our marriage because it just blossoms, you know, from that. But my husband's death, I cannot say that. I cannot say it happened for me, but the grief process happened for me. Mm-hmm. God got me through that. And I'm in a different season now. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things that sticks out to me, even to this day, how long has your husband, how long has it been since he passed? It will be five years this year in April. Even to this day, the way I see you honor him is still so very beautiful. Um, When you walk through the mind wrestling you had with like taking off your wedding ring and just all of that. And I really appreciate you sharing all of that. It, it just was such a tremendous honor to him because you so valued and loved your relationship with him and so I could see why you would never say that happened for me because there was so much pain around that I just I think it's so beautiful the love that you still show and the way that you still honor him it is absolutely positively beautiful how does that make you feel Thank you, Denise. It makes me feel incredible. And the reason I continue to honor him is because he made such a huge impact on my life. Mm -hmm. My husband was the first man that I saw be a good father. I didn't have that in my life. I didn't have a representation of how a father is supposed to treat a child because my father wasn't that figure in our home. Mm -hmm. But when I witnessed my husband and the way he was present with our children and all of the the things he taught them and how nothing could keep him away from being the role model for his children, that made a huge impact on me. Of course, it made an impact on my children, my sons, but to see that Mm -hmm. and then the way he treated me, it, it made a huge impact regardless of what happened, you know, with the trial, we recovered from that. And also to see the fight in that man when, you know, he did what he did, to see him fight for me, to see him fight to restore our marriage, that ignited a whole desire in my heart to fight. And that's what changed my heart because at at first, Denise, I didn't share this part, but I told him I wanted a divorce after that happened. And, you know, God said, no, you're not released, but I saw him fight. And then I wanted to fight with him and we fought together, but yeah, he, he made a huge impact on my life. And I, I I will always cherish him always. Mm -hmm. To me, that's, that's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. So Anita by Design, you have a whole business now that is blossoming at your fingertips with worldwide reach, teaching people to make beautiful garments. And I know you never saw that coming. You didn't like grow up and say, I got a plan. I'm going to create this business. I'm going to make these beautiful clothes. And by the way, they are very beautiful, I must say. How does that make you feel to know that out of it, not only do you have everything you cherish about 
your relationship, your husband, the love that you've experienced with him. But now you have this full blown business that is also just a legacy from what you guys did together. My God, I feel so empowered. Denise, I feel very empowered. I grew up in a different, a totally different uh, mindset. I grew up in a family where there was a lot of um, abuse, toxicity. So I never imagined that me, Anita, would be this person that I am today. Because of the things I experienced in childhood, I created this mindset for myself and these limiting beliefs for myself. And without going into a long drawn out thing, I'll give you a summary of, of the statement I created for myself. I'm not important enough to be invited in life because nobody wants to hear from me. I don't have a voice. Yeah. So I went through my life carrying that on me, but I didn't realize it. It was subconscious that I had internalized that for myself. So I walked through life, living life. I was still, you know, accomplished. I did a lot of things. I accomplished a lot of wonderful things. Mm -hmm. However, in the background, there was always that thought lingering that I'm not good enough or, you know, whatever. So to see what God has done and how he has brought it forth is mind blowing. And the transformation that is happening on the inside. See, you everybody sees what's happening on the outside. You guys see the Anita by Design brand. You see the sewing. You see the speaking and the book. But my God, what's happening on the inside is exceedingly and abundantly more powerful than what anybody can see on the outside. I shared that with, with someone the other day and he said, yeah, we can see it by what you're doing. And I was like, there it is. There it is. It shows the light of Jesus shines when we are walking in obedience to what he calls us to do. And the fact that I am able to inspire and encourage other women around the world, both with sewing and with sharing my testimony for the purpose of encouraging women to let them know that you too can overcome whatever it is that you have gone through in life or whatever you're going through, but not just to overcome, but to thrive again in life. Because everybody, anybody can overcome a life trial. We see it all the time. But what you do in the aftermath of overcoming is what, what matters. You know, are, are you overcoming just for the sake of overcoming or are you overcoming so that you can grow and blossom into this person that God has told you you are? One of the things, Denise, that is blessing me right now is that I believe now what God says about me. Because I am learning more about him and who he is, I am embracing who he tells me I am. And that's the power. So yeah, I feel very empowered, very empowered. You know, listening to Anita share her story and really talk about how much faith was a huge part of her being able to overcome and persevere everything that she had to face. It really reminded me why success superpower number five is so important. Holding fast to your faith is the reason why it's plugged in right where it is. It's not the last superpower because it's least significant. It's the last because it undergirds everything about your journey. Much like Anita's experiences, we face days of contradiction, days when we expected things to go up and they went down, when we expected them to go well and they did not. And it is in those days of contradiction where holding fast to our faith is so vitally important. I share often how your faith, whatever you believe in, should be able to deliver five things for you. And I want you to think about what you hold on to when it gets hard and ask yourself, can it deliver these five? The first is, can it steady you? Can it help you stay steady as you navigate through difficult times? The second is, can it give you peace? 
When all chaos is raging, can you find a lifeline of peace to hang on to, to press through? Is it reliable? Can you go to that source and know that it's going to be there in place, intact for you to rely upon? Can it sustain you? Can it get you from where you are at low times to where you need to be to come out? And then finally, can it give you hope? Those are the five expectations that your faith should be able to deliver for you. And as we've heard from Anita's story, it's critically important. When it gets hard, you need faith. When it gets difficult, you need faith. When you're going through, you need faith. So now that we're back, I want to tap a little bit more into your wisdom. So let me just ask you a few questions. The the first is overcoming fear and facing fear. Tell us how, how to navigate fear and limiting beliefs. Ooh, you know, I think that fear... You know, there's that verse in the Bible that says um, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and a power and a sound mind. And I embrace that with all of my heart. And I understand that God did not give us that spirit. It's not from him. However, there is another verse in the Bible, and I can't remember where it is, but it says that when I fear, and I can't remember who said it, but when I fear, and then he goes on to talk about what, what he does. So that's evidence that fear It's a thing. It's a thing. And I don't have to run away from it. But here's the thing. When I have fear, I get to make the choice. I get to choose whether I'm going to allow that fear to guide my decisions and my choices, or if I'm going to walk full speed ahead with whatever God has called me to do with fear lingering in the background. And what I have experienced, Denise, is that as I allow myself to be obedient to what he's calling me to do, whether I have you know, any type or any level of fear around that is that he just washes that away. It it, it, it just goes away, <laughs> you know? So I don't think fear is an enemy. That's just my, my, my thinking. I don't think fear is an enemy. I think sometimes it's a heightened awareness that you are doing something great, that you are doing something big, that God is, um, exercising his power through your life. And he calls us to some things that are scary sometimes, big things that we may not think we're capable of doing. So the fear, you know, does arise to a certain extent, but walking in obedience cancels that out. The Bible tells us that perfect love cancels out all fears. So that's, that's what I believe on that. Yeah, I agree as well. You know, we we don't want our fear to be removed because it's the signal for us to give pause or concern, right? And so we want to be able to feel that, but we don't want to be overwhelmed by it. And we need to know that when it's not something that should disrupt what we're doing, how to persevere by leaning into that power that God has given us. And so I agree with you 100%. What relationships have you found to be must-haves for yourself to do what you do? Oh my gosh, coaching. Coaching. When I got my first coach, my book coach, that just opened up a whole new world for me. And going through that process with a coach helped me to gain a level of trust to work with other people. And so, yeah, my book coach and then my business coach, that has been Oh my gosh, the best thing I, the best investment that I could have ever made in my life because it has helped me to grow into this space that I'm sitting in right now. Mm-hmm. What what would you say is the big, big misconception of coaches? You know, because a lot of times people think, oh, I don't need that or it's not worth the investment. Like, how did you overcome all of those kind of impressions and say, this is very necessary for me? Yeah. So God had already spoken into my spirit that I was going to need, or, you know, that he was going to be calling me to do something else. And I knew I needed help. I guess that was just an innate sense of, you know, I I can't do this alone, you know, and I think that it's the Holy Spirit who spoke to me. But when I found my book coach, I had been watching or listening to a podcast and I heard his voice and I had already been praying and asking God, okay, you want me to write a book? I need help. I don't know how to write a book. Mm -hmm. And so when I heard this man's voice and I heard his story, 
something just rose up in me and asked God, is this him? So I started following him and just seeing what he was about. What is your story? You know, I, I wanted to know about him. So for me, that was very instrumental in choosing him for my coach because I investigated him. I'm going to say I, I vetted him, mm -hmm. you know, by watching and following him. Mm -hmm. And the same thing for my business coach. You know, I had been praying and asking God, you know, I'm going to need some help if you're calling me to step into this thing on a higher level and just watching and following her and seeing how she showed up and seeing the transformation that was happening in her life. Because I believe that the things that we teach and offer to other people, we need to make sure that we're doing it for ourselves first. So I saw what she was capable of doing and where she is right now. And I was like, that's her. That's the one God. I, you've already had her in my face. So that's the one. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, it's watching the people to make sure that I'm comfortable with what they are teaching and that they are in alignment with where I believe God is taking me that helped me. That's awesome. That's awesome. What do you love most about what you do? Oh gosh, I love that I get to live what I'm doing. So with the sewing, Denise, I absolutely love making my own clothes. Like I have curated my almost my entire wardrobe. I have very few pieces left that I purchased from the store. So I love that I get to sew for myself and then teach that to other people. I also love that I get to live this journey that I'm on in life of healing, overcoming trials, thriving again in life. And then I get to encourage and inspire other people to, to do the same. So the greatest joy for me is being able to live what it is that I teach and share. That's beautiful. All right. So let's close out with my uh, podcast closeout questions. And they really go deeper in three areas, life, love, and happiness. What's your life wisdom? What would you tell your younger self about life if you could? Oh, yeah. I love this one. So I would tell young Anita, when, when I was young, I was into modeling and beauty pageants. So I would tell her, Anita, one day, you're going to earn the crown that you're wearing because I, I did, I want a few crowns. I would tell her one day you're going to earn the crown that you're wearing, but you're going to have to go through some trials, some painful trials in your life to earn that crown. But when you earn the crown, you are going to be right where God wants you to be so that you can help other people. Oh, that's beautiful. Love wisdom. What would you tell your younger self about love if you could? Love yourself first. Because if you can love yourself on a very deep level, then you can attract people into your life and teach them how to love you by the way that you love your own self. That's powerful. Very. Happiness wisdom. What would you tell your younger self about happiness if you could? Happiness is circumstantial. Happiness is dependent upon the things that you're experiencing in your life. So don't put too much weight on happiness. Focus on joy, because if you have joy in your heart, nothing can take that away. No, no circumstance, no, no trial in life can steal your joy away from you. That's beautiful. Tell us more about what's next for you and how listeners can get connected with you. So you can find me. My home base is my website, anitabydesign.com. And you can learn all things Anita by Design over there. I do like to play on Instagram at Anita by Design. And I have a Facebook page at Anita by Design. So Anita, I just want to tell you success looks so good on you. Thank you so You're much. You're so welcome. And thank you again for joining me to share your story. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Denise. Thank you so much. Can I leave one final thought with your listeners? Mm -hmm. Here's what I want you all to take away from this conversation. If you don't take anything else away, take this with you. The trials of life do not come to destroy you, mm -hmm. but they have the potential to usher you into the purpose for which you were created. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <music> So I just love Anita's passion and zeal for her faith. I love how she relied upon her faith to help her navigate through some of the hardest times anyone has ever had to face.
Overcoming betrayal is difficult. Losing a spouse is difficult. Yet God gave her strength to endure and now to tell her story. So I thought I would just play back for you her four steps, the steps that helped her to overcome, the steps that helped her to persevere, the steps that helped her to do such a hard thing. The first one was stand, to truly stand on the foundation of her faith. The second was trust, to trust in knowing that God was working all things out for her good. The third was endure, to allow herself to embrace and endure the pain rather than ignoring the reality of her experience. And then finally, the last step, was proceed, where she got permission to move forward in the call that God had on her life. It's so incredible, the legacy that was created through it all, as she continues to be an inspiration through her business, Anita by Design. God took the works of her hands and now allows her to be a blessing across the world. What would have taken many people out she found testimony to persevere through. Now, I don't know what situation you're facing. I don't know what obstacle lies before you. And I don't even know what low you may actually be in. But I believe that you can step your way out of it. You can stand, you can trust, you can endure, and you can proceed. You can do hard things. You can persevere. And so I want to invite you to lean into your faith, to lean into that power that God has given you and allow it to help you get through whatever difficulty you may be dealing with now. It's always a pleasure to have you join me, an absolute pleasure to so richly into your life. But I want you to know wherever you find yourself, you don't have to stay there. You have the ability, the God-given ability and power to persevere. I will look forward to seeing you next week. And by all means, please continue to embrace your power. Well, that's it, beautiful. Thank you for tuning in. Don't ever forget that you are truly blessed with life, love, and all the happiness your heart can hold. Be relentless in building a life you love without apology. I'm Denise Taylor, and you can always find me in our free Facebook community. It's Embrace Your Power, easy to find. Now be sure to rate and review this podcast and share it with a friend. And make sure you subscribe so that we can stay connected each week. And remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He gave us power. So be sure to always embrace your power and go.